What's up guys? My name is Allie and I am here with my first pregnancy update for baby number two. Now I totally intended on starting these updates a lot sooner than 15 weeks, but between feeling like absolute crap and chasing an almost 18 month old, I've just been in survival mode. So here we are. I have a lot to cover and I'm going to start with the backstory. So let's take a little trip back in time to July. It was the eve of my son's first birthday and I got my first postpartum period. What a lovely present. It was pretty ironic to me that I got my period back exactly one year postpartum. And it was even more ironic that my husband and I had previously spoke about how we wouldn't really have the conversation about having baby number two until my son was one year old. So at that point, it was like the stars aligned and it was time to start talking about when my son was gonna have a little brother or a little sister. At that point in time, I was not ready. We were just dealing with a lot of like changes and medical things and it just wasn't the time to be thinking about having baby number two and that was okay with both of us. But a couple months went by and my husband was really starting to be like, let's have another baby like we want our kids to be close in age like now's the right time and then there was me who was still like uh pregnancy is so exhausting physically and mentally and i just wasn't in that place where i was ready to do that on top of chasing another kid around all day so it took me a little bit longer than my husband and um September rolled around and I was finally feeling like, okay, I think now's the right time for us to do this. And uh, sure enough, October 14th, I had a positive pregnancy test. Before I even took the test, I was pretty confident that I was pregnant. I just had the strong feeling that I was. And it was a lot different going into taking the test this time around because I was like, okay if it's negative then okay like i have another month of not being pregnant and i can just focus on taking care of my son and taking care of me and my husband and not worrying about the whole pregnancy piece of things so i had that peace of mind in it um i was still very excited to find out that i was pregnant but it like hit me in a completely different way because i'm like holy cow i feel like i just went through this i'm looking at my son and i'm like I remember those vivid feelings of seeing a positive pregnancy test for the first time with him and seeing him in the flesh and knowing this how much happened between like those time frames it just it blows my mind and man it's just it's such a crazy thing it really is but before I totally just go off track here um, I was really excited. I was really excited to tell my husband because I knew he would be over the moon. Of course, my son Lincoln, he had no idea what was going on, but you know, that's to be expected. <laughs> going into the second pregnancy, I had a rough idea of when I may start feeling like crap. And the first time around, I started feeling like crap probably around the six, seven week mark. And then I felt a lot better come around to like week 10. So I was hoping that things would be the same um, this time around. And sure enough, I started feeling gross about the six, seven week mark and it just got worse and worse and worse <laughs> just as time went on. And then honestly, it probably peaked around week eight or nine and it didn't go away. <laughs> it just lingered a lot longer this time than it did the last time. And it was really frustrating because I felt like I was failing at being a good mom for Lincoln. I felt like I was failing at being a good wife because all I wanted to do was just lay around and I had no appetite for anything except carbs like pretzels, bread, like <laughs> crap food. And of course the same cycle continued this time that happened last time. I didn't want it to happen again, but it did where you feel like crap and you don't want to eat anything. So you eat crap which makes you feel like crap even more. And it's just this cycle and it's so hard to break. But here we are at week 15, I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling like I can start eating vegetables again, probably like expanding from like carbs and like basic 
protein sources <laughs> getting a little bit more interesting with food so that I can start really getting some good nutrients into me but it has been a long road another huge struggle with food is that the things that my son loves the most black beans avocado sweet potato yeah those are his top three <laughs> all of those things make me want to gag hardcore so gross even now even now like to this day i gave him some of that for dinner the other night and i was like oh my gosh like i just need to like give it to you and then remove myself from the room for a minute and like regain composure because this is rough <laughs> aside from feeling really gross and just having a lot of nausea i haven't had a lot of crazy symptoms i would say in the past probably three weeks i felt more like twinges kind of like pulling like that round ligament pain just as things stretch out and i'm definitely stretching out <laughs> and showing a lot earlier this time around to be expected i mean my body already kind of knows what it needs to do so it's already making room for the baby and i definitely felt like i had a bump by like 10 weeks by 12 weeks it was like starting to pop and now at 15 weeks I'm definitely feeling like I have a baby bump and not just like bloat. A fun thing I want to talk about is the baby's gender. So we know what it is. Or we're pretty, pretty, pretty positive. <laughs> it's a story. Here we go. So for my last pregnancy, I did the sneak peek blood test and came back boy. And I had a feeling it was a boy. And sure enough, Lincoln's a boy. This time around, I just, in the initial weeks, I felt really similar to how I did this last pregnancy. So I was like, it's a boy. I just know it's gonna be a boy. I'm just destined to be a boy mom. It is what it is. So I did this sneak peek test at nine weeks and um, sent it off. We wanted to do it before the holidays. Came back, the email came back. I wanted it to be a surprise for me and my husband, but my husband and I were like, no, let's just open the email together. Like it's a boy, it's for sure a boy. So we're like sitting in the living room, nothing eventful. I didn't even record it. I'm so mad, but um, open the email and it said girl. And we both were like, what? <laughs> like in complete shock, like we freaked out. And Lincoln was right there with us and he started crying because we we're freaking out because we're so excited. And we, we were just like in shock, in disbelief. And I was so much in shock that I ordered the test again. They had a sale for Black Friday, so I was like, oh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna buy it again. If it comes back girl, then I'm gonna like be excited about girl, but unless I have some more proof that this really is a girl, I don't wanna get my hopes up. So I did the test again, came back girl, so two for two girl, I'm pretty confident it is a she. Now we don't have our anatomy scan for another few weeks, so like I guess there's still a chance that it could be a boy but considering how much longer I've felt like so gross I I'm more confident that it is it really is a girl we've sort of started talking about names we have a list of probably five that we keep going back to but I don't see us narrowing down what the name is anytime soon Another exciting thing that has happened most recently is I've started to feel little movements. I think it was about week 13 that I started to think that I was feeling something like little like flutters uh, kind of things, but I just felt like it was really early to feel anything. Um, and then on Christmas day actually was like the first time that I felt like a strong movement, which was really cool. And so at that point I was 14 weeks and now at 15 weeks, I'm definitely feeling some movements and they're not all the time, but they're definitely becoming more consistent and feeling the baby move is definitely one of my favorite things about being pregnant. It's just so amazing to have that validation that there really is a life growing inside of me. It's insane. I really haven't had that many prenatal appointments yet. I've actually only gone into the doctor um, twice, I think. I've had one ultrasound. They did the first trimester screening, so they did a ultrasound and a blood test, and so far everything looks good. That's very promising, and I'm very happy about that. I go in for my next appointment this coming Monday, so I, I will be almost 16 weeks at that point. 
and I believe I won't be going in again until they do the anatomy scan. And it's just surreal to think that we're already approaching the halfway point of this pregnancy. Things have for sure been going by a lot quicker. I mean, the days feel longer because I can't just rest, even though my body just wants to rest, but time in itself is just flying by. Another kind of ironic thing about this pregnancy is that timeline wise, it's tracking almost identically to what it was for my son. So we conceived Lincoln um, in the first week of October and his due date was June 28th, 2018. He wasn't born until July 8th, but um, his due date was June 28th. Now for this baby, we conceived the first week of October and her, I think it's a her, <laughs> her due date is June 24th, 2020. So we're almost exactly two years apart in, in due dates, which is crazy, so crazy. I'm really hoping that this time around it will be a June baby and not a July baby. It was the biggest struggle to be almost two weeks late with Lincoln and it took me, I was in the hospital for five days because it took like three days for the induction process to like kick in and for me to go into active labor. It was a wild, wild process. But this time around, I'm really hoping she will be a little early perhaps or at least on time and we'll have a June baby. I haven't had any weird cravings yet. Um, I guess what's been different than normal is usually I'm like a really big sweets person. Like I could eat ice cream and candy and all that stuff all day, every day. <laughs> but really what's been sounding good to me is like salty things. And I really haven't been wanting ice cream and things like that as much. If I'm in the mood for candy, I want like sour candy, like, um, I don't know, Sour Patch Kids or like Jolly Rancher or something that has like a little bit of a punch to it. Chocolate lately has been giving me like a really weird aftertaste in my mouth. So I really have not been wanting that at all. Um, another thing that's similar in this pregnancy to the last pregnancy is that as far as my appetite goes, I'm more okay with eating food that I'm not preparing. Like if I'm preparing the food and I'm just like touching it, handling it, seeing it in its raw form, I don't want anything to do with it. But if it's prepared for me, then I just, I can, it's more appetizing. So thankfully with the holidays, like Thanksgiving and Christmas, I've had a lot of other people cooking and we've had a lot of leftovers from the holiday events and stuff like that. So that's been a lifesaver. Um, I've been eating out more than I'd like to, but, uh, gotta do what you gotta do to get through the stages of pregnancy where you're just like, I just need to eat something so that I have something in my body and I just need to just push through. I know this too shall pass. That's the mode I've been in and I'm so thankful to feel like I'm on the other side of that. Finally. Well, I think that is it for this pregnancy update. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and join me for the rest of this pregnancy journey. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next update very soon.